This is One on One. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome to the WNET Tisch Studio here in the heart of New York City at Lincoln Center. Let me introduce you to Mark Harris, who's the author of a fascinating book called Five Came Back, the story of Hollywood and the Second World War. Good to see you, Mark. Thanks for having me. Looking at the cover of this book. Um, set this up for us. It's a story of, is it five directors? It's five movie directors who were really uh, the best that Hollywood had had to offer. You know, Frank Capra, John Huston, John Ford, William Wyler, and George Stevens. These were the guys who were making the movies that everyone was seeing, were making the movies that were winning the Oscars every year. And after Pearl Harbor, uh, they, along with one third of Hollywood's adult male workforce, left to, in their case, accept officers' commissions and go become documentarians or propagandists or both for the war effort. Were they largely propagandists? Some of them were and some of them weren't. I mean, propaganda back then was a dirty word the same way it is now, except for the first months right after Pearl Harbor, when suddenly the idea of, you know, selling the war to soldiers, selling the war to Americans, some of whom had not been uh, in favor of U.S. intervention was a kind of universally acknowledged good and noble purpose. So, so uh, Capra in particular was very Frank much Capra. Frank Capra. By the way, name the others. Uh, John Huston, John Ford, George Stevens, and William Wyler were the others. Capra was kind of the hub. He was sent to Washington to oversee the entire filmmaking effort and many of the other directors. He'd won three Oscars for Best Director already, and he was put in charge of making a series of movies called Why We Fight which were seven one-hour movies that were intended to replace uh, really boring lectures that young GIs were falling asleep during. Their purpose was to explain to the American fighting man, many of whom were just 18 or 19 years old, why they were fighting. To sell the war. Yep. To sell recruitment. To sell they the were, war to them, yeah. Were they working for the American military? Uh, they were, uh, the War Department was in charge of them. It was uh, General George Marshall who uh, pretty much had the idea when the war started that film could be an incredibly powerful means of communication. But here's the, the interesting dilemma. And boy, there's talk about the impact of what, you know, we're talking about with, with the book in terms of how wars are fought today. Um, big influence, right? Right. But here's the thing. Many of the scenes in these films were reenacted. Yeah. They're reenactments. They weren't real footage. And so to what degree did these directors struggle with the fact that they weren't showing real war? Uh, it, it was sort of a three-way struggle in the hearts and souls of each of these directors. As directors, they wanted to make great movies. As Americans and patriots, they wanted to help the war effort in any way they could. and. As men, they were interested in telling the truth. And there were times when making a great movie and telling the truth or showing the truth crashed into each other and they faked footage. Um, there was a famous documentary called Tunisian Victory where the North African campaign was recreated in the Mojave Desert and Orlando, Florida. Um, John Huston made what was widely considered one of the great battle films of all time, uh, a film about the retaking of an Italian village called San Pietro. Um, there was a very little tag at the end of the movie saying some of these scenes were recreated. The entire film was a recreation. It was, Houston got to the town after the battle had already been fought and won. Um, and uh, it was recreated, I should say, with the enthusiastic endorsement of Houston's higher-ups. These, these weren't directors who were acting in a renegade way against the wishes of, of the War Department. The Army was very much a participant in selling What are we looking at right there? What are we looking at? Uh, that is a staged shot from San Pietro. That was shot on staged. Yeah, it was shot on location uh, in Italy, exactly where the battle had happened. So the rubble you're seeing in in the background is actual bombing rubble, but and, and the soldiers you're seeing are actual soldiers who John Huston was given as, if you will, extras or actors to um, to replay this battle. It's interesting. We are patriots, we're patriotic, and someone might argue, devil's advocate. What's the difference? What's the difference? I mean, we're Americans, we want to support the, uh, our American military, so they fudge some scenes. Those scenes didn't really happen that way. The American military are really in control of what these directors were doing. What's the big deal? You say 
It's a complicated thing because Houston, for instance, didn't um, didn't fake the footage because uh, the real footage didn't look good enough. He faked the footage because the real footage didn't exist, and he wanted American movie-going audiences to see what war looked like, to see what battle looked like. So he recreated this battle based on what he had seen of shooting and combat, and he did it in this way that mm. we now associate with realism, but which he, in part, invented. For instance, the camera shakes when a bomb goes off. People hadn't done that before, but Houston realized that made it look real. But, but here's the thing, fast forward, I told you that um, years later, uh, I actually did my academic research, doctor, doctoral research, on the Gulf War, early 1990s, looking at CNN and ABC, the smart bombs, right? Right. The military, together with those two networks, I argued, without getting into a whole big thing, that they choreographed, in many ways, the war coverage. Because the military gave those two networks the footage. That's all they had. Right. How much different is that than what you're talking about? I mean, they're both pretty terrible, you know? The, the, and the truth of it is that these guys, the directors themselves, knew it. Um, George Stevens was really uh, ashamed of and embarrassed by his participation in um, uh, a reenactment, and he resolved never to do it again and ended up shooting some of the truest and most accurate and least doctored footage of the war. Houston uh, never admitted that San Pietro was all restaged. Never so admitted. Clearly, it, it weighed on his conscience. But, but here's the thing. All the networks, by the way, did. It wasn't just those two networks. All the networks used what the military gave them. Do you think that what you're talking about in this book and what I was just referring to has dramatically shaped the way Americans expect to see war because we see it as a movie and as opposed to if we were to see more realistic images of war that we just couldn't handle it? Well, when you go back to the Second World War, you're talking about a time when media was really limited. If you were an American civilian and you wanted to take in the war, radio and print and movies were your only options. And if you wanted to see the war, that lets out radio and print. You had to go to a movie theater and watch a newsreel or a documentary. And World War II was the first war you could see, even if what you saw was, you know, really, really limited and often um, censored. I mean, there, there was footage of D-Day uh, you know, 10 days after D-Day in American movie theaters, but it wasn't nearly the kind of brutal or graphic footage that we now know, you know, really represented D-Day. Same thing with the first footage of the camps. So it, World War II did plant the seeds in the American public for the idea that war should be something that you can be shown. Battles should be something that you can see. And, of course, with the explosion of television and 24-hour and news and an infinite number of um, options for taking in information, the demand for getting to see it all has only, you know, increased exponentially. It's an important book about an incredibly important topic. And the topic is not just war, but our view of war and the connection between Hollywood and war and back and forth. The author is... Uh, Mark Harris, the book is Five Came Back, the story of Hollywood and the Second World War. I want to thank you for joining us here. Thanks for having at me. Lincoln Center. Stay with us. Uh, we'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Virtua, NJIT, New Jersey Natural Gas, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, TD Bank, and by the New Jersey Education Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.